Your father was a great warrior and a good husband, but he was not a strong chieftain to his clan. As he travels to join his brothers in the halls of Valhalla, you must take his place. Our clan is beset by petty squabbles. Some amongst our people would contest your claim to leadership, as they saw discord our neighbor's plot against us. Gather your most trusted clansmen. Together you will face dangers which none can predict. You will be challenged on your leadership, your resolve, your wisdom. Build a ship and take your housecarls across the sea. Power and strength for our clan must be sought outside the Norselands. If you show yourself to be bold, the gods will follow you into battle. Your legacy will live for a thousand years beyond your time. Our clan must prevail. Greetings everyone and welcome to Expeditions Viking, a game that is as yet not available. I have been afforded an opportunity to play it ahead of its release. This video should be going up on the 25th, but the game will be available for purchase on Steam and possibly other services on the 27th. It is developed by Logic Artists, who also developed Ex Expeditions Conquistadors some years ago, and as the name can suggest, it's, it's about Vikings this time. Now, this game is, frankly, dangerously enjoyable. I have lost hours to the game. I've played for about four or five hours in total, when I meant to play for about 30 minutes just to get my bearings and, and understand how the game went. But in my defense, it still felt like I was kind of in the tutorial area at that time. But wow, this game has... It, it's got a tux in me. I'm not going to put it any other way. It, it's high praise. It has really, really caught my attention, and I have found myself itching to play it more. So that's exactly what we're going to be doing here. Now, we are, as the intro sequence that I'm probably going to uh, make sure it plays at the start of this video, because it's really good uh, intro sequence, we play the role of a... Uh, of the head of a clan recently inherited um, leadership of the clan. Um, we've got a couple of things to do here in, in traditional RPG fashion. I'm going to skip through deliberate, deliberating over the choices and show you what I decide on now. So here we are. Avak Bjornsson. I imagine it'll be Bjornsson and maybe it'll be something else. But uh, this is our character. I've uh, chosen fairly bright colors honestly i'm not sure how sort of icelandic scandinavian traditions were but certainly in like european frankish celtic the tradition was the more important you were the brighter the colors you tended to wear to show off your importance certain colors were, were practically well you know king's ransom for certain colors of dye so it made sense but uh, this is going to be our character and of course like many rpg we're going to have to assign our character a bunch of skills now i'm favoring the idea of going for a very very heavily focused character towards um speechcraft being more of a uh, of a leader who can bend bend the situation with his words and is also capable of seeing the truth of a matter just by just by you know quickly glancing around staring into someone's eyes that sort of thing rather than a a strong physically intimidating leader you could play either way and in, in certainly in my initial play test of the game, I went with a more of a, a physical um, focus, which is why I thought I'd just try this out instead. Now, with perception as one of my mains, we're going to be going with bows as our main uh, weapon. So we'll dump two points into that. Uh, I think I'll also take cripple because, you know, if I can keep someone from getting close to me when I'm mostly a uh, ranged fighter, that makes a lot of sense to me. We will purchase a rank in leadership. We will will also purchase, let's go ahead and see, eh, two ranks in diplomacy. Again, I want to be able to talk our way through certain situations. And finally, hmm, I've got a couple of skills here that we can go for. You don't need to spend them in this way. It's sexist? No, I don't think so. Um, you don't need to spend it in this, in this way at all. But, um, point blank, no, I can't afford that one. That was a shame, because I wouldn't mind it. I guess I could go for walk your shots. 
uh, allow me to increase my accuracy over time against a single target that I'm repeatedly attacking. Okay, I like this character. Let us get straight into the game. Aid me, Odin, in my effort to bind the struggles of a bygone time as glimmering light on glass. That's actually quite quite a, a nice little uh, poem there. It's quite... Oh, I'm not sure if it's a poem. It's certainly poetic, though. It is the evening after your father's funeral. When you close your eyes, the image of his blazing ship, uh, ship shimmers in the dark behind your eyelids. It's not common ritual this far south, but your mother, Astrid... Now, I'm assuming it's Astrid and not Astridir. Only because I've heard the, the name Astrid in this kind of setting plenty. But anyone who actually knows, do correct me in the comments. I There will be lots of places for you to correct me. And this is, this is an open invitation for you to correct me. Politely, of course. But I'm going to get so many things wrong throughout this, this uh, playthrough. I want to get better, so by all means, don't hold back. Let me know when I when I do something wrong, and hopefully I'll learn from it. But uh, she hails from the lands of the Geats, and, and she insisted on it. All the thanes of the neighboring clans have come to attend your feast in his honor. Your father may not have been the most successful thane, but as a warrior, he commanded the respect of many. The guests are filing into your father's, your, longhouse. The thanes enter first, each trailing a modest group of warriors. Your mother leans in to whisper a few words of advice before she takes her seat. You should greet each of the thanes before the feast begins, but listen well to their words. Few of them would benefit from making this a smooth transition. It will be important to know where they stand. And with that, we are free to begin. Now, we've, or rather, I've been through uh, some of the tutorial elements, so at least until the point where I stopped playing in preparation to record, I'll just skip these and discuss them as we go. But we've got a number of people that we can talk to, and a couple of people that we can't directly talk to, but for example, if we move close enough, they'll have a little bit of discussion there, and we'll be privy to it, uh, as is the case here. Skaki, this be the, must, must be the most p pathetic mead hall in Jutland, I would imagine. Uh, I'm gonna try every word. Well, most of them, I imagine, and every name. I, again, fair warning, I'm going to get most of them wrong. Um, Hrodgirda, or Girda? I, Hrodgirda. If you're going to insult our host, at least have the sense to whisper. I'd hear Bjorn had neglected this clan for years, but this is just sad. Maybe his son will do a better job. I doubt he'll live long enough to get a chance. Oh, well, that's, that's, that's great, that's great, thanks. That's exactly what I wanted to hear. Uh, good question. I haven't seen them all day. That doesn't bode well for them not to attend their thing's funeral. Oh, it's another family. Well, I mean, I know. I agree. I wonder what their game is. Well, we'll find out soon enough. Rurik. Your elder brother, Rurik, has always had a penchant for music. He looks up and gives you a warm smile as you approach him. Got geld, brother. Rurik grins. I mean my honored thing. How do you feel? I'm well, Rurik. I know our father is in Balhall now. Rurik smiles. You can barely hear his soft voice over the din of the feast. I'm certain he is. Odin would have to be a fool not to accept a warrior like him. Uh, well, I'm not sure how I would go with this. How's everyone been treating you? If anyone disrespects you, let me know about it. I'll make sure it doesn't happen twice. I don't know, that, that would almost be insulting in a way. I mean, it would be nice in the sense of, well, you know, you're letting me know I've got your back, but it's also, you expect me not to be able to fight my own battle. So I'm gonna go with, has everyone been treating, uh, how has everyone been treating you? Everyone knows that you are the better warrior and a stronger willed man than I. Nobody wants me as their thing. To tell you the truth, I think our clansmen are almost as relieved as I am that you took the mantle. I have to go and be a good host. I'll talk to you later. Your brother flashes you a cheeky grin. Does he use the old signal if you need help to get out of a conversation with one of the other things? I, I like that. It feels like we've got a really warm relationship with our brother. Right, Kettle, let's go and have a uh, chat Busy with you. Busy entertaining your guests? Yes, I... well, actually, not yet, kind of. 
Cattle is standing off to the side, holding a horn full of mead. The young hunter appears to be watching the feast with a faintly amused expression, and he nods respectfully when you come near. Not too busy to check in on you. Kato shifts his weight restlessly. I've had an uneasy feeling all night. Have you seen schools, skulls over there in the corner? Uh, Hrodgirda and Skaki? I've heard stories about them. Nefia seems to be expecting trouble too, so I've decided to go easy on the mead and keep an eye out. I appreciate that. It never hurts to be careful. He throws his head back slightly towards Aelsvir. Uh, Asli. Well, I've no idea. Mm, an A and an S. That's difficult. Adelfir? I'm not sure if the S really should be pronounced too strong. Speaking of which, keep an eye on that big luck back there. He and his friends have been putting their heads together all night. I think he might be planning something. He's family. He wouldn't attack me. Cantil raises an eyebrow. Sure, he wouldn't do anything underhanded, but it's basically tradition for your families to fight over who gets to sit in the big chair. Well, I mean, that's true, I suppose. I meant underhandedly. But this is your feast. I'll watch him and his friends. You should relax and enjoy yourself. Okay, well, we'll start with a chat with you. Um, I'll just go with Elfir for now. He's a distant cousin. Leadership of the clan has moved between your side of the family and his for generations. He's known as a skilled warrior and a hard worker. He sits with his two closest friends. Our condolences on the passing of your father. At least he died the way he would have wanted. He will be feasting with the gods tonight. He looks up when you approach his end of the table. Neither of his friends acknowledges your presence. His tone is respectful, but slightly cold. Uh, I'm not going to instigate anything. Thank you, I hope there is no bad blood between us. He seems to consider this for a while before replying. It's no secret I didn't agree with how Bjorn ruled our clan. Bearing this in mind, I don't see what gives you the right to succeed him. But this feast is in his honour, and I will not insult his memory here, nor will I challenge your claim to the leadership. It's very, uh, very upstanding of you. Um, no, I'm not going to instigate any kind of conflict right now. He, he's right, this is not the, not the time. Thank you for keeping things, these things separated. He simply nods once, then returns his attention to his companions. Now, let's go and talk with Halfdan, Half Dan, maybe? Uh, see, again, the, the R's at the end. I'm not sure if, how I'm meant to pronounce those. Half Dan is the thing of a slightly larger clan that borders your lands to the east. He wears a solemn expression and nods heavily when you approach him. Bjorn is in Valhall now, Havek. There is no doubt about it. He died doing what he loved. But while he feasts among the heroes, you're left back here to sort out the pieces. You've got your work cut out for you. What do you mean? Your father managed to make quite a few enemies in his time, most of them among his own clan. If you'll permit me to be honest, he never paid one speck of attention to the wishes of the needs of his people. Surely, you're not expecting your clan claim to leadership to go uncontested. That's a good point. Um... No, I'm, I'm going to be honest. I mean, you know, I know many disagree with my appointment. It'll be a difficult transition. Well, shit. As long as you know trouble is brewing, you can take steps to prepare for it. That is true. He empties his mug of mead in a single gulp, then slams the mug onto the table and calls to a thrall for a refill. All right, well, let's go and talk with School Skull Cleaver. School Skull Cleaver is the thane of Yelling, which borders your area. Yelling is a large territory, and school is one of the most powerful things in Jutland. Yelling has prospered under his rule. I hope I am pronouncing the, the J's correctly here. Uh, otherwise, I've made so many mistakes in just that one set, that one like paragraph. Oh, my lord. School pushes himself away from the table with his foot, the chair making a grinding sound across the wooden floor. His face shows earnest sympathy. Avak, my boy! So sorry about your father. If there's anything that people of yelling can do to aid you in these trying times, don't hesitate to ask. That's very kind of you, Thane School. Of course, we must all stand together against the Frankish threat. He leans towards you, resting his elbow on the table. Tell me, 
What are your plans for this place? How will you lead your clan? Uh, no particular reason to be um, inhospitable right now. Um, let's see. Uh, well, let's... I wish to be an attentive thing. I'll start by building a folk boot. A wise course. I can already tell you will make a better thing than Yorn. As I said, he was a great warrior, but it's clear that's where his interests lay. I'm sure you know I fought with your father many years ago. We were very much of similar inclination, he and I. That man had a real taste for battle, not like his brothers. Mark my words, Avak. True bonds are forged in battle, not bound in blood. He came to me for advice before he mounted his last journey, on account of my ties to Kaupang. I should have warned him better about what he was getting himself into. What does that have to do with it? He knew what he was getting into, but he went anyway. He should have stayed here and remained, minded his clan. Or I can just let him keep talking, or, or rather just remain silent. I think sometimes the best thing to do when someone is talking is to let them keep talking. It's a lot of information someone will, will accidentally spill out in that uncomfortable moment where they realize a silence is forming and they don't want the conversation to end. They'll just try to fill the gap. And sometimes they're, they're so rushed to do so, they'll say more than they mean to say. Ah, it doesn't look like this town. Uh, but I've taken too much of your time already. I know you have other guests to entertain. Perhaps we'll talk later, after a bit more mead. He nods to himself more than you and turns his attention to the food on the table. Oh, very well. Uh, let's go talk with uh, the last of the optionals. Let's talk with um, Ranghilder. The Ranghilder of the White is the most influential of your guests. As the vassal of King Sigurd Ringer, she is the current ruler of Denmark. She has come from the trade hub of Ribe to the south, where she presides of Yar as Jarl. She nods politely as you approach her seat. It was a beautiful ceremony, Avak. I extend my condolences for your loss on behalf of Ribe and the king. I must tell you, I advised him not to seek out the isles across the sea. We've all heard stories of the unprotected coasts and their treasure, but there is more danger there than rumours let on. I'm not surprised they claimed his life. But I am glad at least he died with a sword in his hand. Uh, now, there's different types of options. And, and these markers let me know what they are. This will end the conversation. This will progress the conversation further. But it'll progress it in a way that excludes the other choices. As this is not the sort of game where you can just keep coming back and try out every single uh, dialogue path. This is kind of small talk. It does let you come back to where you were in the conversation. But these ones are, you, you've stuck to your, you've, you've made your choice and that is the choice that's, that's gonna carry forward. So I'm gonna ask if she knew my father well. I knew him as a warrior. We fought together on the Brav, uh, Bravelier and he struck me as a shrewd tactician. When your king needs you, I hope that you will serve him as well as your father did. Um, my father told me everything he knew about combat. Uh, did he? Yes, let's decide that he did. She nods once. I would expect nothing less of the man. But remember that no amount of practice is a substitute for actual experience. That is fair. Um, I was hoping the king himself would attend. That seems remarkably pretentious. Thank you for accepting the invitation. We are honoured that you could make it. Of course, your father's sword will be missed in our struggles against the Franks. If you'll excuse me, I must do the rounds. Enjoy the feast. The old shield maiden smiles. She gracefully slides back down into her seat, whereupon she spears a large piece of chicken with her knife and dumps it on her plate. And now we will speak with Nephia. There you are. The feast seems to be off to a good start. You know they're important when they have voice acting. Nephia is one of your oldest friends. Your families have always been close, and you grew up together in the village. She just finished pouring your mother a mug of mead. Are you helping the thralls? No, let's not insult our friend. Maybe it's that kind of friendship, and, you know, banter is the norm, but uh, let's not start off with that. It's nice to see you out of your armor for once. Oh, honestly, when you think about it, either one of these is bad, but... Uh, 
Uh, I guess I'll go with this one. Uh, if Not because I want to make comment on the fact how she looks in a dress, but just because I don't want to say, you're helping the slaves? What is this? That seems a little bit more insulting. You've seen my sister in this dress before. Surely that's the same thing. God, she was so excited to see me like this. I'll never hear the end of it. Uh, where is your sister? Uh, Aphura. A sardonic undertone creeps into Nephia's voice. My poor sister has a fever again. She has such a frail constitution. All this wet cold is hard on her. Mother stayed home to care for her. What do you think of our guests? Your fellow things are certainly proud and graceful bunch, even as they plot to murder you and take your lands. Uh, you think so poorly of them? Oh, I'm sure not all of them are actively planning to kill us. I have a weird feeling about school, though. I doubt they call him Skull Cleaver for no reason. That is a fair point. Halfdan plays a, the lovable old grump, but I know he's had his eyes on our harbour for years. Ranghild, I'm not sure about. She probably has nothing to gain from destroying us, but she is little more than Sigurd's appendage, and who knows where he stands. Let's talk later. I have to be a good host. Good luck, and watch your back. I will try to. Right, okay, it's time for us to sit down. Following the initial meet and greet, everyone toasts to your father and digs into the meal. Food covers every inch of the table, and the freshly brewed mead seems to flow endlessly. Now, just as a, a forward here, I know that there's some co combat coming up. I played at least that far. And I just wanted to, to stress that whilst there's a fair bit of talking here, quite a lot of the game, this is just the, the, the main setup. It, it's really setting the stage for the story, so there is going to be a fair bit of talking um, in, in the beginning section, but we will be getting to the, me the meat and bones of the game fairly soon. But talking will always be an important part, and it will probably be a bit more of an important part for my character, because I've built him to be able to deal well in dialogues. Right. Following the initial meet and greet, everyone toes, blah, 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 and Kettle just left. You're listening to Nephew's usual complaints about her mother when Kettle perks up and slips discreetly out of the longhouse. Outside, some pieces of pottery clash against the ground, and men begin to shout. In short order, the door flies open and the doorway is filled with Otnar, uh, sorry, Otar, sword in hand. Outside, you see his brothers standing over the prone form of Kettle. Otar looks around the room with disgust. What a splendid feast for such a shit thing. Language, my lord. Ara's gaze stops on you. He raises his sword to point at you accusingly. Avak, your family had its chance to earn your, our, our respect, and you wasted it. Come outside and defend your honor, or we will burn this hall to the ground. Nephia jumps to her feet, already holding her knife. Her voice seethes with disgust. Ada, you miserable drunkard! How dare you attack your thing's honor during his own feast! Your family will pay for this! Ada has turned his back to you and is already walking back outside. All the other guests turn their gaze to you in anticipation. Your mother leans in to whisper in your ear. You have to handle this. If the other things think we're too weak to deal with such a blow against our family's honor, this will not stand. Nephia, are you with me? A shadow sets across Nephia's face. By the gods, he's going to make us kill him this time, isn't he? And with that, we can have I hope talk Kittle to her, is I think. Right. Uh, yeah, so do I, actually. Can we talk with you again? No, it looks like that uh, has gone. Okay, we need to pick up our gear. And we've got a simple knife, a shield, and an old boat. Now, the gear that you get given at this point is largely based on the skills you took. Because I took uh, the bowmanship as a primary, I got given a bow. However, if I had taken different skills like axe or sword, I would have been given other things. Uh, I'll also pop mead down there as well, so I can use that in battle should I need to. I mean, refresh my memory, it'll increase the strength by three. Very well. Uh, if I swap these around, I'll see what kind of damage I'll do. 13 to 16. Uh, fairly low chance of actually hitting. Block chance with the shield is quite decent, though. 27%. But I do an awful lot more damage with my bow. And I'm very accurate with it as well. So that's always good. Most of the guests follow you outside and form a half circle behind you. 
you're dimly aware of the other things muttering amongst themselves. Nephew runs over the cattle to help him back to his feet. A streak of blood runs over his hair, down his cheek. Out from under his hair, rather. But it looks like he can still fight. Four against one. Is this what the sons of Erlinger son? Oh my lord, that's a tongue twister. Consider a fair fight? Shut your mouth, woman. He started it. Uh, I could use diplomacy. Uh, will you be alright, Kettle? You snakes, you will die for this. If you crave a fight so much, then prepare. Then there are proper ways to handle it. No, I'll go with diplomacy since it's a special option. Um, actually, I'm going to check on Kettle first. Will you be alright, Kettle? It's nothing. Toss hits like a little girl. In fact, no, I'm certain Nethia could do far more damage when she was little. You sniveling little. Come over here and say that again. Now I'll go for diplomacy. Go home, you fools. I know your fa our families have never been on good terms, but if we spill each other's blood tonight, the killing will never stop. In the back, the youngest of Erlinger's sons, Ar, is looking increasingly distraught. He's right, Otter. This is not what Father would want. Otter groans with irritation. It doesn't matter what Father wants. We're here now. There is no going home with our honor. Nephew says, Nothing about this is honorable. I should never have come here with you. Then run, Ar. Run back to the farm like a coward and we'll deal with Avak ourselves. Ar's eyes flicker between you and his brothers. Dejected, he takes two steps back, then turns and walks away. Arthur's gaze never leaves you, and his hand cleanses around the grip of his axe. If you crave a fight so much, there are proper ways to handle this. From what I understand of uh, the kind of um, traditions back then, there were actually a lot of ways that you could full-on like have a fight to the death that was considered legal and honourable, and this is probably none of them. Arthur shifts his weight restlessly as he regards the things assembled behind you. Too late for second thoughts. When Elfir is our thane, he can judge the honour in what happens here tonight. Okay. Elfir steps forward and draws his weapon. You've gone too far, Otter. There is no honour in this. I must take Avak's side here. Oh, that's interesting. And it feels like because he drew him into the conversation by naming him, he kind of forced his hand. He couldn't just sit back at that point. He had to make a stand one way or the other. He seems like quite an honorable in individual. He's now following us. For a moment, confusion mixes with fright in Arthur's eyes, but he quickly composes himself. Fine, we'll kill you all, then I'll be thing. That isn't very likely how this is gonna go down. Now there's a lot of stuff you do here. It's turn-based combat, it's quite strategic, and I really enjoy it for that. You can choose to move between anyone at any time, and you can also partially move. So we might want to see what everyone can do. Now, for me, I've got a couple of different abilities. I'd have 93% chance to hit here, 95 there, and you're in cover, unfortunately. Really, are you in cover? It might be that I would have to shoot through my allies to take the shot. Now, you'll notice these shields and half shields. These actually provide cover that um, a full shield means you can literally just stand there and no one can shoot you from the direction of that shield. A half shield means that you'll crouch and still no one can shoot you, but when you, if you want to counterattack, you can simply stand up and take a shot, which is an interesting one. Uh, however, I think we will go with a straight up attack. Uh, there are zones of control, so if I move down here, I am more or less committed to being down here. You can also have lethal or non-lethal attacks. I think we're going to go with non-lethal for now and see how this pans out. Um, I would quite like it if you... You've got a spear, so you can reach him from there, so... Uh, yeah, actually, Otter, go for Otter first. <coughs> there we go, 50 points. Otter doesn't have a shield, he has no uh, direct defense. We can get more information about people by clicking on this and then uh, clicking on them directly. And we find out their morale, what weapons they've got, their stats, what skills they have, all sorts of really, really useful stuff. You can also do that in yourself, but as I said, you can actually move after you fought, you can move partially and take a fight. Yellow areas are just movement. If I move down there, it's showing me if I try to move past it, I'll get I'll trigger an attack of opportunity. 
Usually people only have one attack of opportunity. Actually, I'll move forward a little bit and you can stand there. Now then, you could go for a shot and you're actually quite capable. You've got a 95% chance to hit here. Um, yes, why not? Or I could cripple him. Now, a cripple will mean it'll be 25% damage, but takes away all the target's moves on the next turn if it hits. Which would be quite nice. But, given how good of a chance to hit we've got here, go for a quick shot. This is going to reduce the chance by 30%, but I'll get two attacks. So, go ahead. One. Oh. There we go. And the second one, much lower hit chance. But we could take him out of the fight straight away. Oh, dread. Okay, well that was done. Now that was a full move ability. So it, it basically shut down all of his movement and his attack for that one. Uh, next up we can go to Elfir. Uh We can rush him, we can stun. There's a couple of things we can do here. Uh, I wouldn't mind going for... If we stood over here, then we'd be close enough to this cover to benefit from it for the the sake of him shooting over it. It's not like XCOM. We don't strictly need to be next to the cover to have cover. We just need to be in line with the cover to benefit from it. But we're going to just move in. We are not going to be able to take this guy out in this turn. So we could move down here and go for a stun straight away. That may be worth doing. And that would incapacitate this one it wouldn't do damage but it would slow him i could kick him back as well or i could just go straight for an attack we do quite a lot of damage uh sure yeah we've got a shield so it's <laughs> unlikely they're just going to try to run around because they'll trigger an attack of opportunity and it's also unlikely they'll be able to really do much against us so now here is the thing we've got a couple of things we can do here i've got a ranging shot which is a free action if i use this on a hex, then all the hexes around it become spotted. So I could drop it here, and anyone around here would be spotted whilst they're there, which would give me an accuracy bonus. So I'll take that shot, and there we go. He's spotted, so I'll have a little bit of a better time shooting, but it looks like he's still in cover, unfortunately. Now, the green is where I can move and still attack from. Uh, the yellow is where I, I lose my opportunity to attack. Now, I don't need to do much to take you out, so uh, I'm going to... Hmm. I'm just going to straight up attack you. There we are. Harried and down. Now, he's incapacitated because I was going for non-lethal, but with the remainder of my move, I'm going to move into cover and end my turn there. Actually, I can still move you if I want to, and I can move you down here so that you're more or less in cover there. That'll probably be a better place. Yeah, I like that. Okay, enter. Now, predictably, you went for an attack. We didn't block this time, which is unfortunate. You've moved and you've gone into cover. Ooh, that's not quite nice. But uh, you did resist the harrying, which is very good. Now, Nephia, can you take him down? You're actually very, very powerful with that spear you've got. Let's actually uh, take a look at you for a moment. Let's have a look at your stats. Now, I forget what stat it is. I believe finesse, um, or is it? No, it's endurance that, that helps with uh, spears, I think, or it may be finesse. Determines base damage with knives and spears. Ah, there we are. So finesse is very high, which is why you do so much damage with your spear. But yeah, sure, take him out at reach. There we go. And again, non-lethal. Uh, with that, I would like you to be in some sort of cover, but it doesn't look like there's any there. You can move over there, though. It's not a problem. You can stand over the other enemy, and you can move straight in for this. I could just go ahead and stun. Physical resistance, unable to act, cannot block. A base damage reduction is 0%, even if the attack is blocked. Go for it. We'll try and reduce all of his ability to do anything at all. And then I'll have my archers go and uh, try to take him down. So there we go. We can move over here if we want to. At which point, no, nah, you're still fairly heavily protected there. But from over here, you might be able to take a shot. Let's see. Do we have a clear sight? Yes, we do. 
Fantastic. 90% chance to hit that's good enough. There we go. And you're harried. Uh, I believe harried means that they have a, a big damage reduction penalty, but it doesn't matter because you can't protect anyway since you're stunned. And this, if it hits, will kill. Or rather, will incapacitate. There we are. Okay, so our first battle is victor uh, we're victorious, and really only the guests took any damage. Now, this part is actually really in interesting. Um, yeah, after every fight, you'll check out, see if any items are broken, but also if you gain any new uh, injuries or if there are any existing injuries. Now, injuries really actually change the battle. Like, you can come out of a battle having been, like, knocked to the ground, incapacitated, but then you still win. You might end up with an injury, and these injuries can have quite severe effects on your character. Um, sometimes they're, they're something that can just be slept off in other cases though it'll be something that will take time um and uh, resources to try and try and fix uh in this case you had light uh, trauma to your head which is you know part of the story if a character was injured during combat the new injuries will be displayed here they will need to be treated the next time you make camp uh this is where you'll see uh, equipped by your herdman if you use any items during combat it will show here as well um, combat results if any of your equipment got messed up. Okay. Otter groans as he tries to sit up on the frozen earth. Kettle walks over to the soundly defeated farmer and kicks his weapon away. Otter groans as he tries to sit up. Oh, no, okay, that's exactly the same. Otter's surviving brothers are slowly getting to their feet as well. None of them has any fight in them. Nephew regards the survivors with a mixture of disdain and sadness. What do we do with them? See, this is, this is a difficult difficult decision i'm in front of all of the other things this this wasn't simply this this wasn't simply these people showing up to to have a shouting they just insulted us but more or less just like scarpered when i tried diplomacy that would have been the end i mean there would have been repercussions but they wouldn't have been severe especially if you know, when they were sober, they were they were uh, remorseful. But they they full on they they flat out said they were going to kill us. They have dishonoured not only my claim to leadership here, but my father, since this is his funeral feast. I don't think there can be any other response here, whilst also showing the the other things that we are. A thane who is willing to make the hard decisions and can lead his people other than executing them we went to the effort of keeping them alive so that we could kill them uh the irony is not lost on me but this is the way it's going to play out the grim work does not take long your guests look on solemnly as the snow in front of your feast hall turns red with the blood of the farmers if any of them doubted your resolve before now they see what you are made of Oh, we're getting, getting an actual show of it. I didn't choose this option the last time. Oh, that's bad. <laughs> that, was, that was brutal. Oh, my lord. Elvis steps forward. He looks not the least bit tired from the fight. I supported you here tonight because Otter and his brothers were out of line. It is not the way of our clan to kill each other in drunken brawls. Yeah, I, yeah, I just killed them for a drunken brawl. Uh, hmm. Avak, son of Bjorn, I challenge you to a duel for the position of Thane. An excited murmur rises amongst the guests. Kettle mutters in a voice too low for anyone other than you and Nephia to hear. Can you believe this? I have no idea what that word is. Um, I'm assuming it's an insult. A pretty bad one. And so at risk of offending a bunch of people. No. He said it, so can you believe this Bikusoner? Bikusan? I I I no idea. Son of a goat or something? I don't know. Probably worse. It's his right to issue such a challenge. His timing could be better though. No, I'm I'm gonna face it. Um but why do you challenge me? The seed of the thing should never be passed from father to son like a sword or a horse. If our clan is to endure, we must ensure that we are ruled by the strongest and most wise among us. 
I mean, I can't doubt his reasoning. Again, his timing could be worse, but he, he's, he's fair to issue the challenge, as uh, Nephia said. Edelfir, oh, again, I, I change my pronunciation of his name every time. Son of Grimvard, I accept your challenge. We will meet on the Holmang Island at noon on the morrow. May the gods favor you. I mean, even when he's challenging me to a fight, which is possibly to the death, he seems polite about it, which I kind of like. Right, at this point, we've opened up the map and we can start exploring, and there's a lot of things for us to do, many people to talk to. But I'm afraid we're going to be leaving that for the next episode. Do let me know what you're thinking about the game so far down in the comments below. Your feedback is more than welcome, and any help pronouncing these names is absolutely essential please don't don't let me continue to look ignorant don't my 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 honor is in your hands commenters please but uh that is it from me so do remember to leave a like if you liked and sub if you haven't and i'll see you next time take care everyone <laughs>